Maybe see. Thank you. We're gathered here uh, in the sight of God, these witnesses uh, today, to unite Zach Zerbel and Hannah Middleton in holy matrimony. As believers in Jesus Christ, they recognize that it was God who instituted marriage and who said, It's not good for man to be alone, and I will make a helper suitable for him. The God who created and redeemed them also uh, instituted this marital relationship they're about to enter. The commitment uh, to be made is not uh, to be done without careful thought and prayer. And so uh, today, uh, each of you are committing yourselves exclusively to one another for as long as you both shall live. This love is not to be diminished by difficult circumstances. It is only to be dissolved by death. As God's children by faith in Jesus, the relationship of marriage is especially meaningful. It's possible, uh, certainly for non-believers to marry, but only members of God's family by faith in Jesus Christ can ever experience the truest joy and fullness that God intends for marriage to have. So uh, let me remind us all present that our homes will never be all God intends if we leave God out of our lives and of our relationships. As you are obedient to God's Word, as you allow God's Spirit to control your relationships, your home will be a place of joy as well as a testimony for what God intends a Christian home to be. So who gives Hannah today uh, to be married to Zach? Her mother and I. All right. Uh, Zach, let me say a few words to you starting off. Zach, uh, certainly our God of love has established marriage as the symbol 
Christ's perfect relationship to his body, the church. We have come today to bring the two of you as one before him. And scripture tells us that God has ordained the man as the spiritual head, as a responsible provider, and as the initiator of love in the human relationship. By God's enablement, your strength must be Hannah's protection. Your character must be her boast, her pride. And you must so live that she will find in you the haven for which the heart of a woman truly longs. Hannah, uh, for you it is God's purpose that you be a loving wife, that you respond to Zach's love and tenderness with a deep sense of understanding and an ongoing faith in Jesus Christ who brought the two of you together. It is God's desire that you have an inner beauty of soul that would never fail. For both of you, Christian marriage is not merely living for each other. Um, it's all about the two of you uniting hands together to serve God and to seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And we know that God's going to lead you into and, and through some situations that will bless you. Uh, so they will build your character as you go together. God will give you enough tears uh, to keep you tender, enough hurts to keep you compassionate, uh, enough failure uh, to keep your hands holding on to His, and, and enough success to keep you thanking God for His grace and His goodness to you both. May you never take each other's love for granted. Always experience a wonder that delights in the fact that out of all the other people in the world, you have chosen each other. When your lives are covered, may you still be found hand in hand. Thanking God for each other. I pray you will faithfully serve our Lord Jesus happily, faithfully together until the Lord uh, takes us home. Zach and Hannah are, are being married today in a church building for a reason. Uh, their faith in Jesus Christ and their commitment to God's church is certainly a priority for both of them. They have responded to God's love for them personally. They have turned from their sin and they have been saved. They have become believers in Jesus Christ. And once any person uh, reaches a point of admitting the fact of their sin and believing uh, that Jesus Christ laid down his life and died on the cross to pay the penalty for their sin, uh, when you believe that and when then you willingly commit yourself to live the rest of your life for Jesus Christ and for his glory, the Bible says you're saved, you're born again. You become a new creation in Christ. And so if you're here today, you're in the church for a reason. Uh, Zach and Hannah uh, want God to be first. And they want to glorify Him with their lives. And perhaps there's someone here today that has never been saved. You've never been born again. And if that's your condition, then uh, why not trust Him today with the rest of your life as they have done? And you can do that through a simple prayer of faith just by saying, God, I know I've sinned falling short of what you expect. I understand Jesus Christ died on the cross and paid the penalty for sin that I deserve to pay. And so today I want to commit my life to Jesus Christ. I want him to forgive my sin and make me a new creation in Christ. If that's your heart's desire, uh, God will meet you here today. So let's bow for prayer. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for this day and for this opportunity to come together uh, to give glory to God through the coming together of this precious couple. And Father, we're so thankful that we can gather in a place of worship. And we can draw near to you in prayer because you made it possible through Jesus Christ who came to serve, who laid down his life, who died on the cross that we might be saved. There's someone here today that needs Jesus Christ to come into their heart. I pray today they would just offer a simple prayer of faith. Maybe, maybe something like this. Dear Lord Jesus, I know today I'm a sinner. And I've not been living uh, the way you intend. And uh, I understand that. And today I want to put my faith and trust in Jesus Christ. I want to commit my life 
to you and I want you to help me from this day forward to be the person you created me to be. Save me, Lord Jesus. Forgive my sin. Come into my heart and make me that person you want me to be. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. <coughs>